Well, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us uh, for The Invisible Man. It looks like our audio for the video actually did not go through. We thought it would, but it didn't. So apologies there. So I can sing if you like. The Invisible Man. There we go. <laughs> A little bit of introduction. Um, so thanks for joining us. We're a little bit late. Um, as usual, it is, of course, a Saturday when we're playing. Uh, we're doing the, the Invisible Man show. Technical difficulties will abound. And now, you ready for introductions, Ryan? <laughs> uh, sure, why not? Let's give it a shot this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, off you go. Well, everyone, this is... Am I doing you or yeah, am I yeah, doing yeah, me? Yes, doing okay, me. I'm doing you. All right. <laughs> so that is, that is Mark David Stollard. Uh, he uses his middle name even though he doesn't have to. And this is Ryan Jans. His middle name is also David, but he doesn't use it even though he should. And, and we yeah. are It's All, all in the, the mind. mind. Best hey, we've done in a long time. High five. Right on. Yeah, we go. Right. Um, Mostly because uh, it doesn't work out <laughs> usually when I'm broadcasting from home because of lag. Okay. <laughs> so that's what got, I'm going to... That's my excuse. Okay, so we've got Phil Colorado Phil will be joining us in about 10 minutes or so. It's going to be a fun show. We have Loose from Load is going to join us in just a second. So don't forget, uh, whatever format you're watching this in, whether you're watching it live or not, a like, subscribe, share, and all that other good stuff. So our special guest, very special guest, is a very uh, special lady from uh, these this very here, uh, this, this town here, Winnipeg. Um, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. So this is Luce Carey, um, Carey Luce Forsyth, or, uh, aka Luce from Lode. She is a Canadian. Here we go. She's laughing at me. That is a Canadian singer-songwriter from Winnipeg. She fronts a band. She's a rocker. She's a redneck. She's a hillbilly. She's a Canadian. She's a girl. <laughs> and she's also fronts a band called Lode. Um, it's an ambient pop alternative band. And I may huh. live in Winnipeg part-time, but I'm not okay. from Winnipeg. I'm a yeah. West Coast girl, born and raised in uh, British we, Columbia. We know what? I'm gonna, you know, what? I'm just gonna put you on the screen. There we go. If you're talking, yeah. you may as well be seen, right? Um, so much, so much for my professionally written intro. Um, so you're a, um, a a lady of many, many talents. Um, you've with the first band, or Lode was the first band to go to South by Southwest festival in Austin, Texas, which is a something I think all musicians want to go down there and. Get yeah, we got there. to go twice actually. Yes, 2017 Ooh. as well. Um, I mean, literally 20 years later, that's an amazing accomplishment. I yeah. don't know how many yeah. bands in the world can say that they yeah. opened up South by Southwest and they closed South by Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> as long opened as, and closed. As long as it wasn't the same show. Right? <laughs> no, it was a different it set. Yeah, okay. So, a little longevity. <laughs> So we're good. Um, let's say what. Uh, so you are you played for the private inauguration party for Randy Bachman at the uh, Canadian yeah. Music Hall of Fame after the Junos. Sure. Private parties was it? You know, bits uh, CD behind there. You know, some naughty things going on. Well, there's always <laughs> naughty things going on, but that's my CD. Yeah. Get, yep. There we go. Ah! Oh. I have the weirdest there camera situation. <laughs> Look, I'm it and it's moving. Yep, we actually got a, we've got a good picture. I'll show. We'll put that up on the screen in a bit. So we've got a nice clear high def pic. Um, and let me see. So you've. Uh, I, I think that's probably good for a, a intro. I think people realize who you are. Um, you've got a new CD coming out. Uh, loose overload. Uh, uh, sorry, out. out sorry. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we go. So that's that was my introduction. All professionally planned. <laughs> I'm really I good. remember about a hitch, and you know, I'm, I'm we're streaming here from Mexico, from our home in Loadside Studios on, in Mexico. So I'm really excited to be uh, involved in this. Yeah, that's great. We're in Colorado, this is a quick, pretty global uh, podcast. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. To, actually, we had a right on. Yeah, uh, what's on last on the week? We had um, Northern Ireland and uh, Great Britain as well. Yep. on we on on our musical Maya show. So yep, we get yeah, a couple everywhere. of fans coming in from there. Yep. Uh, so. It's I haven't seen any that we've got some viewers, but uh, nobody I know yet, so it's not showing up. <laughs> hey, so, so happy to thank you, everyone else out there for joining I can't us. So we don't see anybody. Know. Hopefully, there's some people I know. <laughs> well, I, it's usually my job to call out everybody who comes and joins us on on there. So, eventually, I'll interrupt and and say hello to to people who are joining. Um, so, I guess without further ado, yep. uh, we'll we'll just get right into it. Um, yeah, sure. So, yeah, the notes are on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yep. notes are there. I've got notes here. Yeah, We've we got, got notes three. there. We've got lots of notes. <laughs> <We're> prepared <laughs> for notes. So. Yeah, yeah, we're good for that. So, uh, I guess we'll start uh, we'll start off with the CD. Um, cool. You might as well start off with the CD because that's yeah. I I have been shamelessly <laughs> plugging your CD for the last uh, since you committed to being on the show. What was that? Three weeks ago. Uh, 
Yeah, so longer, about that, but right? It's three or four weeks, somewhere around there. So I had to wait a week because I, I needed. Uh, yeah. So there it is up on the screen. Uh, loose overload by load. Uh, so every once in a while, you come across those um, those albums that you just throw on, and they become like your summer album. This has become this has become my summer <laughs> album. It's. Uh, it's best summer album <laughs> of course <laughs> and it makes sense right uh mm -hmm. if uh, if we got mexico involved in uh in recording and and part of that that right. makes sense summer in mexico works great um <laughs> so uh i got i actually did a little bit of com comparison here because i wasn't sure what to expect uh, i never know what to expect sometimes sometimes it's really easy to uh to sort of pick it apart we had a uh, uh, Dolly done on uh, three or four weeks uh, just before you came on yeah, about, a month ago, uh, yeah. about a month ago yeah. and it was really easy to pick I bet you she's a country artist right and you listen to her music yes she very much is a country artist yeah. so I knew exactly what to expect right so Mark if you throw up that picture on the uh, on there so there's a picture of yeah, Carrie yeah. there's a Perry of there's a picture oh, of Carrie there picture. right yeah. And so I saw that picture and I was like, all right. So immediately, what, immediately what came to mind is Joan Jett, How Pat Banatar. It's like my, my idol and Blondie, you know, Load started as a Blondie cover band. Wow, well, okay. Band. <laughs> Good. We were in Load until we started only playing Blondie tunes just because that's what we all do. All and right. We started writing tunes and Load evolved from that, but we were a Blondie cover tune. And I used to do a guest girl spot in a Winnipeg band, a punk rock band called Fudge Tongue back in the late 80s, early 90s. And we used to do Pat Benatar, Hell is for Children. So there you go. So Every one of those are spot on in my life. Okay. <laughs> so that that's just by looking at the picture. I hadn't downloaded or got your album yet because I, I, bought, I bought it on um, off Google Play uh, just because I – Right? So hopefully you get more than a couple bucks for that. Um, so if we actually go – and then I give this, the CD a list or the, the album a listen because I, I – drive a lot for for my day job so i can just throw it on as a um as something as i'm listening to as i'm driving so what i pulled out of it is if you throw up the what i heard is a combination of these three artists so dusty spring oh is that gwen so, stefani gwen stefani and dusty oh, springfield are the two on the top and then the songwriting styling sort of that storytelling of janice ian and that's kind oh of what God. I, that's what I heard, right? <laughs> so, uh, anybody's ever said to me. Well, and here's, here's why I say that. There's a, there's a particular song on your album called, uh, Worship. I got it. I got it. Got it. Good. So when I heard that, I immediately thought of Dusty Springfield. That's the black and white photo up in the, up in, the, I guess it's the top, it'd be the right yeah, hand, top, I think. This one. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. singing the way everybody. Oh, okay, so the top left, and if you listen to a a song, you can all look it up on YouTube. It's called Spooky. It starts off very similar to the way, and yeah, so you know it, right? You may not have known that was Dusty Springfield, but that's so I immediately thought of that. But then there's this quality to Gwen Stefani's voice where she. You don't have to see her, but you can sort of tell that she's the way that she's emoting. She's smiling. She's doing something, and I could hear that through the way that you're singing in that song, right? So I'm driving from Winnipeg to Steinbeck, and I've probably listened to the song about five times and just dissecting it, right? And just that sort of surreal, not quite folky, but like just narrative storytelling throughout some of your other songs, that's where I make the comparison to, say, uh, Janice Ian and some of the other like really uh, strong. And also, Janice has a very unique... Uh, powerful voice which on it doesn't necessarily come through on worship but a few of your other songs um particularly there's a uh, one where it starts off um Ooh, you should have trusted me oh, like no, that I'm, I'm, oh I'm, man I'm, just that that really long hit and the the guitar following the melody it just man it just like it like punches you right mm -hmm. like right in We're the gut so sometimes, yeah know? and so that yeah, and that so I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm trying not to go too fanboy here because we, I could, <laughs> Carrie, I could I interview like you. Luce is amazing. We love Luce. Luce is great. 
God, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, but I, I really just enjoyed it, and it's just again, I was expecting just because based on that photo, I was expecting okay, a little bit of Joan Jett, a little bit of Heart, a little bit of Pat Benatar. Okay, grungy, good. I'm ready for that. And this album wasn't that, and I was yeah. like, but it was, it wasn't a bad thing. It was like a, huh? I know. It's I really thing. like this. Another right? one, of, you know, Load's got four CDs now. Mm-hmm. So if you went back into a CD, you might feel like that. But we've evolved from the three CDs, and actually, this one is our our first CD, Delicates. That has to be the most special because we did it first, and we started everything with that and we didn't have much help on that one actually it's pretty oh. raw load and then we got involved with producers and ideas and our our music evolved and we got to work with people from all over the world it's been remarkable and then the third cd i never thought we would do um because we didn't do it with our original guitar player and that was bittersweet for us but johnny stewart a longtime friend and com- comrade you know stepped in and, and we wrote that album and it's stellar i, I it's the best one, you know, uh, of all of them. And then this album came about and it's really, um, it has my mark on it. These are songs that I wrote or um, developed and or chose as cover tunes. There's a couple cover tunes on that, on the CD that are wonderful, I think. And the whole vibe, the whole sound of it actually is the epitome of load. It, Every single person in load oh, since 1997 appears on this album. Oh. New and old. It's really beautiful. Oh. Excellent. Well, that's great. Uh, we do have a couple of people joining us that I have uh, seen. Jessica wife, uh, Jessica Reeve, my lovely and wonderful wife. Thank you for joining us. My Probably my that's biggest good. fan. <laughs> and, <laughs> I should hope anyways. And uh, our good friend all the way from Ireland, uh, Catherine. I'm not even going to say your name because I will screw it up. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Catherine and Jessica. Anybody else who's not, friend me on face, fa- Facebook so I can call you out. Okay, excellent. Um, so the the band uh, lineup has been fairly fluid. Was that intentional from the beginning uh, to bring other people in, or was that something that just kind of happened over time? You know, without I have to. This is a shout out to the band. You know, this is the, about the men that play and load. Um, they're so talented. Every single like we've had, we have a core, a nucleus that has been together since the very beginning, but. For some reason, we attract the most amazing musicians from across North America and Europe. I mean, we've had Jimmy Barr from Portishead featured in our last CD. We work with Dale Wallace from Emerson Drive. We have uh, wrote songs with Glenn Willows from Harlequin, Richard Duguay, who's performed with you know Guns N' Roses and his own um, his own Richard Duguay experience. We just we have been so lucky to have people that want to play with us. So. Without trying too hard, we've been able to attract some really amazing musicians. And myself as the singer, I mean, I, I get lost in the music of Load. It, it's so um, charismatic and it's so dramatic and it's so ambient too, you know. It, it's there and it doesn't sound like anybody else. It sounds like Load. And every, every song from every album, you can tell that's us and you can tell it's nobody else. And so that's like the most exciting thing for me we just we put our mark on things yeah. and people respond you, you know what we probably have more fans that are musicians than the general listener at this time we have a large following of really talented people well absolutely i could see that uh actually one question uh, that sort of just comes to mind because i get these i never anticipate any of these questions because <laughs> i'm a bad host that way um your your singing pro, your singing process. Uh, obviously, you've got a very unique, powerful voice because it really comes through on your your stuff there. Uh, so this is sort of a twofold question: have Have you done a lot of training or background in singing, or is it just something that you've done and just sort of comes naturally? And second is when you go to write this song. Now you said this album, Loose Unloaded, is particularly you, so it's got mostly your fingerprints all over it, stuff you're oh. writing and whatnot. Do you find it's easier to, um, do you uh, write your lyrics or your melodies first, or does that just sort of come organically as you, as you play together with your band? You know, that, that's probably the foundation, that question is the foundation of how this album came about, because I'll say generally, 
um, the guitar player and bass player, either together or individually, bring a lick or an idea, right? And then we develop it, we work on it together. But the songs on this album, I brought the idea, whether it was the melody or I wrote all the lyrics and had to express that and get that across. And I have to give a shout out to Jimmy Creasy, who produced this album and plays a lot of guitar tracks on it for me um, because he could understand exactly what it was that I wanted to get across. And because I don't I don't play guitar, I don't read music. I have to express myself in ways besides words sometimes with ideas with motion with things and and even in load the incarnation of load right now that features kyle hauser on guitar and um he's the glue of of load in this moment these guys can understand music sounds uh, feelings emotions and so i've been able to just be me and they vibe off of that, as Phil would say. You know, Phil likes to vibe off of things. And so <laughs> together we write songs. These particular songs, I either wrote the melody and then brought the lyrics, or I brought the lyrics and the band wrote it. Other songs that we do, it's usually the band, and then I sit with them afterwards. You know, it's all individual. Uh, so, uh, so, so it's, I mean... Could you um, pin? You can't really pin down, pin down any one song that or any one method that you use. It's really just that the each of the songs that kind of grow kind of organically. I do, you know, because I've, I've been driving, just driving somewhere, and I have to pull over and sing into my BlackBerry or something because <laughs> I have to um, it could be I heard something and that inspired a little different lick, and I I want to remember it. I could be open. I, if I get inspired, I'll open up GarageBand or something, you know, on my computer and just get a few vocal lines down. And then I can mess around and I can create some sounds. You know, the last song on the new album is basically just me singing a cappella. It's a song that I wrote to, okay. with the help and, and design. And it was immediately picked up by Lollybox Productions, which does film and movie soundtrack placement. And that's something Load has a lot of experience in now from artistic short movies and feature length films we've been uh, involved in soundtracks and my goal for my next album would actually be to write a soundtrack i think okay. that would be amazing to work on it from the very beginning to the end and just instead of having things chosen out of the blue i'd love to be able to yeah. put my mark on that now you have mark. one of, you have one of your uh, the tracks on there i think is it licensed or optioned for um for a, a, a movie, I'll, I'll try and look at my notes here. Um, <laughs> there we go. So, uh, Sun Up, Sun Down. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah, so we've had that uh, um, signed with Lollipop Music um, to their international. So that's hold, putting that out there. That they think you're good and that's good enough for music for movies and TV and whatever. Yeah, and so they've asked for more music from us, which I'm very excited. Okay. That's all underway next week and of course on the 27th we have a big show coming up in winnipeg for the the documentary yeah, and that's just like a fun that's show the, anyway that's on the documentary we can't wait it's gonna be a ball there we go um that's on the 27th that's right there we oh go God, so. the exact same script thing. <laughs> <laughs> those are my legs oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all we've known you. Yeah. I, in fact, <laughs> that was just a little sneak peek. It's just, <laughs> just a pair of legs that have been, have been on yeah, your profile. Oh, and of course, I've got lost all of my notes now. There we go. And my glasses. Oh, it's getting. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for uh, your there support. There he is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Phil's just sitting back and laughing at us, which is pretty normal for the show. <laughs> so, what's the Canadian homegrown documentary about? Are you asking me or Phil? I'm asking you. Uh, we're going to ask you. And well, Phil well, unless Phil in. knows more than you do. I don't know if Phil really is up on what's happening in Canada these days. He, he snuck away on us. But yep. the homegrown, you know, it's a very interesting documentary. There were some bands from Manitoba that were, were chosen because of their careers, mostly because they're not signed bands. It's a documentary about unsigned bands and what happens in our country and North America um, on radio in particular and how almost impossible it is for young bands and old bands alike to break through into a certain part of our industry. And 
for me, I'm a big supporter of Canadian content. I, you know, I love Canadian music, particularly like 60s and 70s music, as you'll see in some of the cover tunes that get chosen by Lode and how we perform. And I just think Canadian music's the best. And there was a time that radio supported Canadian music um, in a in a vast uniqueness. And today right. it's just the cookie cutter type of thing and no room for local bands or independent bands on the radio. So it's a documentary about that and all the things that we have to do outside of getting support from our own, you know, radio stations. And, and I might say that out of this documentary, I don't know if I'm speaking on a turn, but a new radio station is coming for us. It's going to be all Canadian, particularly if, like, there's going to be one in each province, I think. So we're going to be doing an all mm -hmm. Manitoba a radio station here and some really cool things are coming out of the documentary not right. just complaints okay. you know i think cool. it started out as a bit of a complaining documentary and it actually turned into creating some really beautiful solutions for 2020. nice so is that terrestrial radio or internet radio is that like a real uh, it's web-based for now okay. but they're actually talking with the crtc and doing some things like that okay no, that'll be, be exciting oh that's yeah. that's yeah. really yeah. good yeah, because because up in um, just so you know, there's four hundred and sorry, four thousand and four hundred Manitoba musicians registered in the province of Manitoba. So honestly, four thousand four thousand registered web pages, acts, music videos. How are we not tapping into that in each province yeah. and and working a show with our own people and supporting yeah. our own people? So that's what we're going to try and do. And it's because right. of people like yourselves, and particularly Phil. Phil Dupuis, Colorado Phil, however you know Phil, mm. our friend, you know, the, you guys are the glue yep. and that you're you're changing it for the local musicians. You're helping them. Yep. And that's important. And, and God bless you for that, I just oh. want to say. Oh, thank you. Um, it's something that we, we've we been passionate about. In fact, we had, a, well, you'll recall um, the University of Manitoba had a, a radio station that uh, was a wonderful radio station. I had lots of. Uh, I was I, the best host on that radio oh, station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I listened to it all the time, and it just suddenly disappeared. I, yeah. think, I think there was some pol politics going yeah, on in the background. But 93.3. Yeah. Uh, no, they, they had their own sort of set of politics that they were working through, and they had a couple of hosts that just didn't didn't do like fill their paperwork out properly so that artists could get paid through the CRTC. Now again, college radio doesn't pay a whole lot, but it's still, it, you still have to register what you've played. So Absolutely. they would, they would either through ignorance or just out of stupidity, wouldn't do file their stuff properly. And then eventually the, the station got, just got shut down. They just said, no, we're not going to do it anymore. But you still have CKUW, uh, you still have UMFM that are going strong, but they're the only place that you can get local. I think there's... Um, well, yeah, and it's not, I mean, and, and the, the independence is yeah. less. It's like, uh, I don't, there's not very much on there at all. I mean, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, you tune in in the right time and you're going to hear some really cool independent stuff. I find that UMFM is really good for that. CKUW, depending on the host, will do that. But I find that CKUW, because it's right downtown Winnipeg, if you're not into like uh, like 20-something-year-old university hipster kid stuff, you're probably probably not quite the radio station for you. And I kind of had to walk away from that because I'm, I'm – I'm a dad now, and it's just uh, well, I'm gonna be forty. Awesome. So. <laughs> there is a load. <laughs> no, so. Getcha. Um, so just uh, going back to the uh, the documentary there. Was that uh, uh, a project that you were brought into, Luce, or was that uh, something that uh, you would were you involved in uh, getting that started? Or uh, no, I didn't get it started. I think that we were the first band that was maybe chosen oh, okay. for it when it came about. So fortunately, we've had a little bit. Um, of input, we'll say, you know, right. certainly not, it's not our project, it's not our control, but we've had a little bit of input, hopefully, into what's happened after in our career and how we can help other people in the future yeah. and help ourselves. Like, oh, we sure. want to play music, we want to play and, and um, fulfill our goals and dreams, right? But yeah, we also right. want to bring everybody along with us and we hope that other people, you know, are proud to be standing with us. Yeah, excellent. Um, so, uh, would, where, where would uh, someone? Where would we expect? We'd, I can't talk, can I? Where would we expect to uh, to see the documentary? Is it something that's going to be on TV or uh, online? I um, 
it's a feature length movie. Okay. I don't know where the distribution is to be honest. Okay, and fair enough. You know, Ken Loxton is the man in charge of that. He's from Winnipeg. He's done remarkable stuff. He's even worked with Willie Nelson, other huge stars doing video work. So we're excited um, at the process of what's been happening and where it's going to go. We're actually, Lode's actually going to um, film a couple of videos starting um, in three weeks. Uh, a couple in uh, Winnipeg and a couple in Mexico, and Ken's going to be involved in a few of those too. Okay. So, nice. so we've been really enjoying working with Ken. Okay, um, so uh, so there, you've got uh, four four bands are, are appearing on stage with you on the twenty seventh at the Bulldog Event Center. That's on the screen there. Um, how many bands are involved in the documentary? Is it just the four, or is there many more? There's four of us. There's, there's four. I okay. There are some supplementary bands that are being interviewed, but I don't know if they're being right. filmed. You know, we're our performances are being filmed. We're going to be, you know, we're speaking and being interviewed for the for the documentary. And however that okay. get edited and put together, I, you know, I'm not sure. sure but. And I guess on this topic, I have one question written. Um, the answer might be no. Uh, but do you have any juicy behind the scenes stories of uh, making of the documentary? You know. <laughs> <laughs> or those are for the extras on the DVD. <laughs> because really no there's no juicy <laughs> gossipy things yet but we're stupid on the stage of these things and we have so many problems and and kyle in particular kyle and i are always um we're full of antics you know and we have little inside jokes that nobody else understands although they're pretty clear when you <laughs> it's mostly just like kyle and i being morons and laughing and doing things behind the scenes but you know actually the funny the, the real ironic thing the funny thing i'm going to try and be so delicate when i say this because as i say the the movie is kind of a complaint it's about bad things that happen to good bands mm -hmm. in our industry and in the meantime, we're starting to film this documentary. And Lode is also doing a CD release. It's getting new CDs out. It's like got a lot of production stuff going on in the background. In between takes of the filming of the movie, I'm on the phone. So, like, I'm on the phone trying to organize CDs. I'm trying to organize our CD release. I have to say that the club we, you know, did our CD release didn't even put us on the calendar until, like, literally two weeks before our show. Gee, I wonder if they were like former managers of the loft. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I'm not even going to name any names right now because we love the club, but we were not treated well. So, like, this, this is what would happen. Ken would ask Kyle and I, like, what are the pitfalls? What bad things happen? We couldn't come up with anything. But then we'd take a break, and I'd get on the phone just to do our gig. And, like, three things would come, like, we can't get on the calendar. Uh, we can't get a manager. The sound man doesn't want to help us on the day of that show. And we have to, you know what I mean? It's just like one thing after the other. So Ken would say, well, what, you know, what hard, what's hard on you as a performer? Like what, what goes wrong? What, what doesn't support you? And we're kind of like, I don't know. And then we're on the phone. It's like this, we should have been filming this. This is the problem. People don't give a shit. People don't get paid enough. People don't, or in the wrong job, whatever it is, you yeah. were up against yeah. it in our industry, just like everywhere else. Mm -hmm. so that, that was pretty funny because literally, when we're asked, we don't think of the bad things. I think musicians and people in bands, they love to play, they love to make music. They don't wanna have a hard time. They just wanna go and maybe make enough money to have dinner that night, you know? Like nobody, nobody is a hard ass in this industry that way. But then you're up against people who just, don't like you yeah you yeah. know or want something from you that you can't give in that moment so then you're you're in a hard time well and it, it's funny because as you're saying as you're saying these things it brings back memories of me you know. walking down osborne village looking dropping my head into every single bar every single coffee club every every place that i could go say hey can we play on stage mm -hmm. and trying to broker a deal uh and that was at a point where i wasn't working full-time uh, I was just playing music, so whatever we made, it was going to support us. So I'm making pennies. I literally had enough bus fare to either get me from my house to Osborne Village or Osborne Village back home. And I don't remember what I did that day, whether I walked there and bust back or bus bus there and walk back. But I was hanging posters. I was playing in two bands, so I'm postering for one band. I'm trying to get deals for both bands 
stages to play on. I've got bar owners that are saying I have to promote their bar. No, buddy, I'm promoting my band at your bar. I'll bring in people as much as I can, but I'm not filling your room. It's not my job. And you got people wanting to take advantage of you. You got people who don't, who say, no, you're not the type of music that we want. And I can't get mad at them for that. That's a fair enough answer. I Maybe yeah. those band doesn't fit in that, that venue. That's fine. But you you don't understand the un- independent thing. And we can laugh at it. We can laugh at those kind of things. Ha ha, that's, you know, that's just part of it. But when you're in the thick of it, you're like, fuck, this is the third bar I'm going to. And they're saying, no, we don't want live music. Back you know? in the day. Back in the day when Load started out, and we we um, we really commanded a, a very interesting scene and, and um, a time in music in Winnipeg, and we played for a particular promoter once, and they're actually like they're a big modeling agency now, and they do a lot of things, um, and they treated us so badly, so badly one night they they didn't pay us for like I don't know five or six days, and they made it like it was our fault, you know, like that's we've never worked with them in 20 years because of that because they treated us so poorly one time it's like why why does anybody if you work you want to get paid if there's a problem we expect honesty nobody is anybody you know everything is perfect and it actually was a really successful gig and they made a lot of money and they tried to rip off the bands and when you're up against that it's like this do you say something and then you'll never work with that that group again for 20 years or do you say nothing and you let yourself get ripped off and you'll never work with that ba- that group for 20 years? You know, like it's a bad situation. Mm-hmm. I'm a female in this industry. I've, I've toured all across Canada and the United States, toured overseas. I've been treated terribly by men on the road. I've been treated pretty good as well, you know, but I've had opportunities taken away from me just because I'm a woman too. There's a lot of pitfalls, a lot of pitfalls on the road. There's a lot of pitfalls in becoming um, popular and you know that everybody wants a piece of you and so then you start Mm -hmm. to kind of get fall you fall apart sometimes you know it's it's a not an easy industry to navigate so so just in in sort of with that what came first was loose unloaded uh sort of made as you were making this documentary or was the documentary no no? uh because because I think Unloaded is a Metallica album. Oh, sorry, you're right. Overload. I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. No, 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 or a Matrix spinoff. We used to have the moniker Load on the Loose, and now uh, it's Loose Overload. So, right. you know, we change a little bit, and, and right. we, I'm faulting you. But it is Loose Overload. Overload. Um, it's a reference to a, a couple things. It's about me being the controlling force of Load, right? I'm over Load. <laughs> and also, you know, I've been the singer for Load for 20 years. And um, I felt like it was really time for me to put my mark on there. So in a little ways, it's kind of like, well, I'm over that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm over a lot of things. I want to I wanna be myself in the band as a woman, as a human. I'm a mom of three. You know, I'm a business owner. I'm a land developer. I'm a medicinal plant expert. I specialize in 300 medicinal plants. And those are the reasons I get to write the music. You know, it's those experiences and, and, um, and life things, you know, and, and it's those things that um, allowed me to save Phil's life in mm-hmm. what year was that? Phil? Or can you still hear us? Was it uh, <laughs> 2013? <laughs> 20, <laughs> you died and I. 2013? Uh, I think so. Welcome back to the <laughs> land of the living. Phil. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> Phil and I have been together a long time. We you have. Know, we used to have a, 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 a car, a, a truck called the Loadmobile and it had uh, a road emblem on the side and he used to drive from town to town in Manitoba and everyone would be like, what the hell? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a mobile, and they'd be like, "For sure, kind of obscene, isn't it?" And it was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> hey, am I on now? <laughs> you are. You are very much on. Welcome, Phil. I did have a, I did have a theme tune and a video set up, but no one can hear it, so there's no point playing it. So, right. Phil, oh yes, uh, Phil, so Phil's free Hi. for all. Woo! Hi, everybody. <laughs> wow. Hey, uh, Luce. Well, wow. Hey, it's been a year, right? Yeah, I haven't seen Jack to the day. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so Phil, so for Phil, Phil has been Phil's been giddy for about a month when he heard that you were going to be on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like shit. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So for everybody watching who doesn't know, I'm Colorado Phil, the uh, creator and host of the Colorado Phil Show, and I want to point out it is available in podcast format now on eight platforms. Download hey, nice, Anchor nice. app, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and Stitcher. And I've got really big news about the show after we've talked a little bit. Um, really big news about the show. Oh, you tease on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a tease for you, to, the audience, to hang around till the end, right? Good. I was going Good bananas there waiting. I was just like. <laughs> You're a patient lady for me. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful interview, though. I loved it. See? I want. Oops. <laughs> Now Phil I can't hear us. Say bad point. things. <laughs> I wanted to make a point with this. This is my pussy hat uh, that I got on the uh, Not Your Bitch tour. And I got this as well. And I want to point out to people, Lord has merch. Lord has CDs. Independent music artists. Uh, it's all in the mind. They have stuff. Oh, when you go. go to a live show, uh, I was hearing you guys say how hard it is to get a live show going. Right, yeah. and support <laughs> your bands by uh, fucking buying their merch. It's it's it. You have to. Kittenhead and the Nerve went on tour together last March, and you know what? I think they made five bucks profit, but they covered their expenses just by fans supporting. Yeah. Buy the merch. Buy the CDs. Well, we need it. You know, people yeah. need it. And they, they work hard to put that out, and it's not. You know. Well, load is for everybody. There's no doubt about that. I, I almost <laughs> tried to say that, you know, maybe we're not for everyone, but we are. <laughs> that's very clear. That's very collateral. Um, but not every band is for everybody, is all I'm trying to say. But <laughs> you, can, yeah, you can appreciate something on the load CD, that's for sure. Yeah. For some, you, for everybody. You know, I haven't downloaded yet because I wanted to hear what all of you guys was, were going to say about it, to hear the hype about it. Because I'm not back there in Manitoba, obviously I'm here in Denver, and uh, yeah, wow, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we've had some nice reviews already, and this month, like at the end of this month, we'll have some really neat things to be sharing with people in the start of our videos and stuff too. Hey, I wanted to ask you, do you remember way, way back, at first I think you were my Facebook friend, Let them talk. and then I got you to be my admin on We The People. I know. Like Shanghai me all the way around. You like wrote me into this, and you wrote right. Me into that. And, and then like, oh. all of a sudden, <laughs> out of the blue, I get an email from from Luce, uh with MP3s in there, and she says she just said, "Listen to these. I want to have your opinion." <laughs> do you remember that? I do. And I asked you, I said, do you want my opinion or do you want my fan opinion? And you said, no, I want your fucking opinion. <laughs> and I did. And ever since then, I've been in, in independent music. Like I know. It was like an inspirational moment for you. You really got the voice with that. And then, you know, that's a very good segue into what happened to you because Phil and I are literally bound in life by a horrible experience that turned out okay in the end, as we alluded to, like Phil had a really ca catastrophic moment um, in my presence and we were alone in a, in a, in the studio and Phil showed up at my place. And I, like always, I wanted his opinion on a song. I wrote a new song and um, it's actually on this album, Phil, like it took a long time to get up. Oh that, boy, is it? <laughs> and, um, I sang it for Phil, like I, we were just sitting in the office, I had my computer and all my files on the table, and he sat down, and it was a very hot day in Manitoba, and Phil had driven maybe an hour in the car, so you have to understand this, that Phil was in a car driving on the highway over 100 kilometers an hour on the way to my place, and literally 20 minutes after he got to my place, he he succumbed to a very bad situation. And so if it happened on the highway, if it would have happened 30 minutes earlier, we wouldn't be, none of us would be here. If Phil would have died in my office, none of us would be here in this moment. And um, Phil showed up at the door and I never saw anybody quite like so sweaty. He had like, just sweat streaming off of him and, and, it, and he didn't look well, but he was coherent and I got him a glass of water. I remember and we sat down and, 
you seem to be okay. And I was like, Phil, I want to sing you this song. I want your opinion. So long story short, I'm singing the song and then I finish. And right <laughs> as I finish, Phil literally, he stands up and he puts his arms up in the air like, what an amazing song. That's what I think. But then he like collapses and starts groaning and like aspirating stuff out of his nose and his mouth. I'm like, I, 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 you know, I'm not trying to be gross. I didn't know what the hell was, I thought he was faking it. I, I thought he was like, oh, your song is so great. <laughs> you know, I, like, oh, I thought he was mocking me. And so then I was like, Phil, like, you know, fuck off, stop, you know, get up. What the hell are you doing? Like you're puking all over my stuff here. And then realized, and like also Phil, was quite a bit heavier at that time. Am I right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, was too high, almost through two sixty. Yeah, and I wasn't. I wasn't a very big girl, <laughs> you know. And um, I couldn't. He was on a chair, and I couldn't hold him up. And he was. I didn't want him to fall on the floor. And my phone was in a different room, and I couldn't let go. <laughs> Mind boggling. And lo and behold, like I got him on the ground, and he would. There was no pulse. There was no breathing. He had just completely stopped living. And I got so mad at him. I literally, I prayed and I, I gave him a right hook. I, you know, I, <laughs> I was the first in the face and then in the chest. And then he woke up for just a second. And then the paramedics came and then he coded again. And the paramedics brought him back and they're like, holy shit, what's happened to you? And I was like, the whole time I was just like, that was, it was really, really awful. It was really awful. And, and I don't know if Phil knows this, but subsequently, um, last summer, a horrible situation happened to my own son, who was only 18 years old at the time, where he um, actually died in my driveway. And I had to give him mouth to mouth and CPR in order for him to survive until the paramedics got there. And I swear, oh my gosh, I had him on there. And I, I'm not trying to make a big deal about that. You know, things happen, wow. but like literally people brought my son home dead and I had, I didn't know what to do except that I knew what to do because yes, I, you did. I so there you go. Um, oh, but- God bless. I, I didn't know the details. Uh, and for people watching and listening, um, about 90% of what Lou said, I don't remember. But you remember some of it. Some of it. Yeah. Um, I remember when you said, hey, do you have, are you holding yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I had to go get my phone and you can't said, go ahead. Hold on. I got to get my phone. Yeah. Yeah. And I slammed my head on the desk. <laughs> yeah, you hit your head on the desk. That's what I tried to pretend that you really hit your head on the desk, but I hit <laughs> 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 my own things, but it was a very hard day. I mean, Bill wouldn't. I don't know what happened to you there, Phil, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah, we us too. Yeah, absolutely. I think you nailed yeah. it on the on the head there, Luce. Uh If Phil, if you wouldn't have made it, this thing would, wouldn't <laughs> no, have, no, no, this no, wouldn't no, be no, happening no, right now. Yeah. Well, I made so. a good move to bring the Kleenex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I also remember uh, vaguely you shouting at the paramedics who were staring at your uh, Mustang, the ghost. Oh God, yes. Well, I was almost a ghost. <laughs> and it broke my heart. I literally, you know what? I walked out and you, it's a weird thing. I, I don't know the rules of firemen versus paramedics, right? But the firemen got there first and in, in Canada and Winnipeg anyways, an ambulance isn't sent first. A fire department is sent first. I still don't get that. But the fire department came and they were looking after Phil and the ambulance or for the paramedics were just like standing outside while... The firemen were in there, but like the firemen aren't paramedics. So Phil really needed the ambulance, and uh, they were like hanging out and checking out. I have a '66 Mustang, and any other day I'd be proud to show off the ghost and talk mm-hmm. about it. But I literally kicked their asses into the house. I was floored, and I, it's funny that you remember that because I got really upset. Yeah. I remember. I also said to you, "It's okay." Yeah, we did. You're, I think you kind of said, oh, but the ghost is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I also remember making a very nasty joke uh, just before they came in. Um, nobody else, I bet, has this story. They can say that uh, Luce actually 
wiped the vomit off his crotch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted me you to look good for the paramedics. <laughs> Bill's crotch. I am so punk rock. You have no idea. Wow. I mean, what an honor. <laughs> and mother of me, you know. You and then what did I do? Know. What did I do? I died again. And uh, yeah, that part I didn't know either. So... <laughs> Thanks for telling me that. And what is the name of the fucking song, my dear? Which one? The one I died for. <laughs> oh, oh. The one. Um, hang on, hang on. Um, it was called Unwanted. It was called Unwanted, and it's a song. Like Now it's called Unwanted. And it's a song actually about women's rights. And it is about the missing women and... Canada and it's about not being heard and it's about just really being strong and doing things and I would that's why I was singing to Phil and all of a sudden like you know he was like oh this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> I probably did and, and then, um well with, with yeah. the risk with the risk of sounding oh. flippant so with the risk of sounding flippant uh could it was it the song was so good that it killed Phil that's what I said yeah, that's yeah. It. <laughs> Right? Oh, oh, that was so good it killed. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now you literally, yeah. Yeah. No, you li then, you literally hey. knocked you literally knocked them dead, right? And I had uh I don't know, what they call it near death experience? Did mm -hmm. you? Um it, all it was was just black and I remember feeling that there was no more pain. All kinds of pain. And it was comfortable. You know, it was beautiful. And this voice said to me, if you want to go back, you have to breathe. And it took just, a, I don't know, probably a few seconds. I felt like forever. And I wasn't even, I wasn't even worried. I was a little bit flip, flippant, uh, smart ass, like I always am. And uh, the voice said again, this is real. Your diaphragm is moving. Yeah, it was like I think that's where she uh, cold cocked me, <laughs> and uh, poof, I came back. And I remember on the floor of the office saying over and over who I was, what date it was. <laughs> remember? And you just started repeating shit like you were in the military, and right? She was, yeah. the, woman was, the paramedic <laughs> was getting right upset. Over and over and over again, I was like, when, when were you a Boy Scout? What the hell going on? <laughs> the paramedic was getting upset. I remember that. And I, I looked up at you and I said, tell her, yeah. I just want to stay. Yeah. I know. It was good, you know? It was a good um, experience all around because... We didn't even get in trouble for smoking pot. That day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and so many things in the background. Oh my god! <laughs> no then I woke up at the hospital, and this lady is yelling at the ER doctor to oh, do the blood test, and he's yelling back at her. He's too young for a heart attack. Remember? Yeah, and then, yeah. I, honest to God, I had to like advocate for you. As you yeah. in my office, and they wouldn't even take it seriously. But anyway, <laughs> but it was all good. I, I did. I had to like unload on a few people. Unload. <laughs> there is. There is. And then it was uh, shortly after that that we went to um, CBGB 2013. Yeah. New York City. We did. And, and loose the loose yeah. Chris was my my doctor. Uh, we'd be smoking around the corner around the, the hotel. And she'd tell me, okay, two puffs. And then she'd tell uh, Luke or somebody to take me up to my room. Yeah. <laughs> two toke, Phil. Two toke, two toke we. we just had oh. to just enough, but not too much. Do you remember we came up in, uh, oh, that bad, that, uh, bad neighborhood. Uh, remember we were in the subway and we couldn't hear the speaker announcement? We had no idea. <laughs> oh and, uh, and you guys got to appreciate, uh, what's the what's the neighborhood called? The Bronx? We were in the Bronx. We were on the north side, too we're far north of the park. And our driver had said to us, don't go north of the park, Central Park. And here we are. We're in the fucking, um, um, what's it called? Uh, subway. And the mariachi band came on. I remember the mari? I mean, honest to God, the mariachi band in the New York subway out of. <laughs> that was the best, right? And the announcement on the speaker, we were all like, "It sounds important," but it was all <laughs> until the last fucking stop. The speaker worked. 
are we're done here. We're shut down for repairs. And then we, these white people, and look at me. You see me with all my, my bling, right? The chains and every fucking thing. We come out of the subway after the, the thing, and I remember all these beautiful black people sitting there, and they look surprised. <laughs> and we just like... I took off the bling and we just will hightailed it to to Central Park. Well, Luke is never, you know, Luke doesn't blend in into a crowd. Luke is a <laughs> player at the time with First Nations and he's pierced and tattoos from head to right. toe. It was like, yeah, that's not the image you see in New York often either. So we, we did make a little bit of a statement when we were there. That was yeah. really an amazing show for us. That was actually the second time Lord played at CBGB's. And yeah. I don't know how many bands can say that from Canada. Right, right. And I was there that time. Oh, what an honor. Yeah. I remember having uh, a late dinner with you uh, behind the hotel or something. There was a little, we could see boats there. Yeah, the marina. Yeah, there was a yeah, little. Yeah, and, and the sun was setting, and I said, man, oh, man, isn't this great? And I've always wanted to go back with somebody special. And, you know, and then we spent that time at the 9-11 site. Yes, we cried. And we That was probably one of the hardest things we did on, on that trip. You know, that was a very remarkable thing. My father being in the military and, and um, just understanding a deeper sense of those people was very... Um, I don't remember the doorman's name, but remember the, do the, the, the elderly black man that was the yeah. doorman? Wasn't he just beautiful? He was beautiful. <laughs> and when that cab burst into flames, I was like, we arrived. It was like, right, right, <laughs> right. We were all still so paranoid. Uh, I know. Like everybody, not just the Canadians, the Americans there, like taxi cabs, and poof. <laughs> Hey man, I'm sorry. Me and Phil kind of shanghaied our, it's, our stories. And it, it's it's Phil show. It's Phil show too. We're co-hosts. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. You I go was right gonna mention to you guys. We're gonna <laughs> love this. We went to um, what's it called there? We went at night there, where all the it's all lit up and it's like daylight and the M and M candy store and um, in, in New York there, we where we lost um. Son of a gun. Oh, Joel. We lost Joel. We lost Joel. Where were we? I don't know where we were. You know that street in New York that's like 24 7. It's little oh, like Times Square. Square. We were in Times Square. Times Square. Square. Remember that? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Where'd he go? <laughs> well, Joel, Joel needed a little alone time. And that's the fun part. Maybe a little disappearance. But you know, when you just disappear on your band, in the middle of Times Square, in the middle of tour, it's a little unnerving. It's Deep, yeah, <laughs> because the rule was stay with your group. <laughs> and and it's got hung up at the airport somewhere too. To treat us always so good with their punk rock clothing, and, and <laughs> we love we love that. You can, oh, uh, there I was with my big jug. Uh, <laughs> my big jug is out. Uh, <laughs> my big jugs are in. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, and, I, and I'm uh, trying to reduce hey, mine. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, Toronto Airport, didn't you? Pardon? Didn't you guys get hung up at Toronto Airport? Do you remember that? I wasn't there. I moved on. I was on the plane with. Um, oh man! Uh, you guys all got through. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna just tell. I hope we have two minutes because this is what happens to Lou when we travel. <laughs> we are a band of renegades, of course, but we're traveling. So, like myself in particular, I tried to look simple and plain when I travel. I don't try to look too crazy. And Joel, who was with us as well, I, he might have been wearing a suit for Christ's sake. Like, <laughs> he looked like the average conservative couple. And then there's Luke Bell, who is like, as I said, First Nations, long black hair, tattooed from top to bottom. He is decked out in every piercing and stud and leather. He's all in black. My brother Luke. Yep. Luke, this flies through no problem then keith keith wood shows up now you have to understand keith is in his 60s and um he was he well <laughs> this man was and he's got long long gray hair and a long goatee and mustache and he's wearing a cowboy hat <laughs> and cowboy boots <laughs> With Daisy Duke cut off jean shorts. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and a, a lure leopard skin <laughs> robe. Okay? Flies right through. Walks right through. <laughs> <laughs> and the 
British. Oh, no, you're going to New York. Get over there. <laughs> and then keep us right until the plane is leaving. <laughs> and they leave me there and I have to throw a little tantrum. I was like, you guys, I'm playing in New York tonight. Like, what the fuck is this? Why are you doing this to me? The US Customs Agency, they kind of laughed at me. You know, like like I was being dramatic. And then it announced that the plane left. And I was there and my band went ahead without me kind of thing. And I was so bummed. And then I walked out of customs and um it was United. And the United lady came over to me and said, They've held the plane for you. Run. And it was literally in the <laughs> other one. And when I showed up at that plane, do you remember? I was like... That's why that joint was so sweaty. And Keith just sitting there with a drink in their hand. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's why that joint is so sweaty. Oh my god. Never again. I'm gonna look like the biggest freak and that's it. That's it. <laughs> Do you remember in the limo? In the SUV limo after the after the airport? What happened in the limo? Uh, don't tell bad stories about me. Something sweaty <laughs> was brought out and we shared it. Yes, I know. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and this happens with Phil. You never know what you're going to get, yep. and sometimes you wish you hadn't. <laughs> well, it's yeah. I, okay, and a really old memory. Do you the first time I went to your house for a meeting? Remember how nervous I was? You mean the brick house? Yeah. Or my house. Uh, the brick house. Or the first time I met Jacoby, my buddy. And what what? Uh, I I was so nervous, and uh, because I was already in that like uh, Ryan's uh, boy fan, whatever at oh, that time, right? <laughs> and he said, "No, man, you're just you're just normal. You're fine." And then I said to you, uh, na "Namaste." Oh God! And you say say that again, I'm gonna throat punch you. You're like pow. <laughs> Yeah, punch you in the throat, Namaste. <laughs> True story. The love of my life. You had an affair with a woman, a woman who I don't particularly like. And as she was having an affair with him, she used to say to me, Namaste, Carrie. Yeah. The best of me to the best of you. Namaste. <laughs> so Namaste has a little bit of a oh, gonna get it's you. A no go zone. <laughs> And how many people have uh, mistakenly thought at shows, I get the uh, the elbow, the knowing elbow, like, oh, loose, eh? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really close, but we're not that way. You know what? It doesn't matter who I'm seen with. I'm sleeping with them. It doesn't matter. I, I honestly, I have... I have cousins and family members that I show up places with, and literally I'm sleeping with them the next day. <laughs> I just don't care. And I try to say to the women of the men in my life, like, you just can't pay attention to that. <laughs> I need you guys. I need all of you on my team. You can't listen to that. But honestly, yeah, everyone thinks we're together. Everyone thinks Kyle and I are together. People think everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know why, though? Because when we perform and we're all together, we literally fall in love with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time when you see us on stage, Keith was really for that. Like Keith falls in love with everyone on stage. And Kyle and I, Kyle and I play perform together yeah. as a solo, like as a duet, yeah. as well as with Lord. We we really strip down things and we have our own kind of set that we do. And if you see Kyle and I, like we don't realize it in the moment. Yeah. But when you look back on us, we look like we're lovers on stage. Mm -hmm. We love each other. There's no doubt. And so then people get, you know, the impression that we're together that way. But we're not. It's the music. It's the emotion. It's our respect for each other, you know. And, mm -hmm. and we really respect the people in our lives, especially the wives and husbands of the people that work with us. And when we're on the road, we behave. And when we, we honor the people in our lives. That, that's why we've been around for as long as we have. Yeah. Oh man, I've been ridiculed. You know, nobody knows this, but I was ridiculed for for working with uh, Loose and Load. Oh, I know. Right from the get go, right from the get go, ridiculed, ridiculed, ridiculed. Um, but we, we, that was just your haircut. You know, like that wasn't us. That was your fault. 
Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> we've been through a lot of stuff. I tell you that much. Remember that show in Saint Malo? Yes. Uh, our boxer guy came over. You know what? I just asked Roland if he wanted to be in a new video, and he declined. Just that? Oh, come on now. Honestly, you know, people people are funny, and people have other things. People don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah, but Roland was pretty funny that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. UFC, we have we have people from all, all walks of life that follow load and work with us and we bring them out with their videos or doing things and and uh it's just that would have been a good uh relationship. Yeah. And we're still friends, but yeah. I'm gonna, I'm moving. Do you guys ever move around in the show? Am I like <laughs> Hey uh by the way, next time I message you, don't like answer over and over again. Before you tell me, <laughs> what? Can you see my view? Wait, I don't know. I don't know if you can capture this. Can you see it? Palm trees. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Nice. Oh, oh look at the so beach. Hey, hey, Phil, be quiet so oh. we can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> there, we right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> That's my view today, fellas. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Anyways, I was getting a little stiff there. <laughs> Hey, you know, if you guys haven't checked out the show lately, you should, you know. Your show? Yeah. Here, you you want to hear my announcement? <laughs> yeah, you play oh, load? Now, now is a good time, yeah. I play load. I play It's All in the Mind. I play Kittenhead. I play The Nerd. Johnny Got Rocks. All kinds of stuff. And what I do notice is that 204 always wins. Lately, yeah. it's been 204 all the way, yeah? That's because oh. I, I've registered about 30 <laughs> Facebook accounts and I keep hitting, I keep voting. <laughs> So starting on Monday, so everybody knows, uh, what are you doing, darling? You know what? My computer is about to die, so I had to just plug it. No. So uh, okay. I was at the other station, and we're not going to say who. And then I jumped ship, and uh, HGB Canada Radio, uh, now out of New Brunswick, is my home anchor station. And starting wow. on Monday, starting this Monday, I will simulcast uh, live onto Virtuosity Worldwide, uh, based out of Grand Junction, Colorado. It's internet radio, but both of my managers are strong, uh, independent women, like uh, like not 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 unlike Chris. And uh, they have a fucking good vision uh, that I believe in, and um, there's some cool stuff going to happen. So yeah, two stations now nice. as of Monday. Excellent. Congrats, Phil. Well, That's awesome. And there's a potential for a station in the UK as well. Nice. Well, bravo. 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 And by Monday, I'll have load all downloaded into the system. Good. It's about time. <laughs> and uh, hopefully nothing bad happens when I play that song. No, nothing will happen because we all Well, actually, um, he was actually asking um, yesterday um, about how do we – Download it, and he was trying to get an illegal, co an illegal, co an illegal copy, so he could put, he could play it. Yeah. <laughs> download. Download. Yes. Anyhow, <laughs> we're everywhere. You know, oh, yeah. the, real, the real definition for load is a burden. A load is a weight on your shoulders. This is what she told me the first time I met her. Okay, so load the, the band. It's a long, the long road. It's a hard, hard time. But loose, loose, and always, and loose is when you're free, when you're loose from all your uh, burdens. So load on the loose or loose over load really is uh, about okay. becoming lighter than your burdens, and that's what the band is about. When you listen to those songs, they're deep and they're dark sometimes, but yeah. at the end, there's always a little loose at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't want to end this without talking about last summer. That was awesome. You were stressed out because you, I think you wanted more of a band, bigger band or something. No. You were disappointed about something. And I said to you, no, that's fine. This is fucking perfect. Yeah, no, you know, the band was going to come and, and play. Like, it was my birthday. Yeah. But not I everybody. Knew. <laughs> but it ended up like, what, 15 musicians showed up. And we oh. just sat and jammed for the whole night. Even you jammed. Yeah. And I know I promised to do video, but my phone died and I didn't get to post that video. But um, we were just like, the people that showed up there was such a, a eclectic group. 
from hand drummers to guitar players and a bass player, and we had all acoustic instruments, and we were in the backyard and had our own bass jam. Right, and it was beautiful. It was like Disneyland. Yeah. The stars were out um, in front in front of us. The river, the Red River. Um, I got to meet Lori Mustard from. Lori was there. First time ever. Oh, that was awesome. I, that I gotta yeah. say. Man. The people that show up at Carrie Land and Little Side Studios, there's an interesting thing. Ah. You don't want to miss it. If you get asked to come to Carrie Land, you should. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm still uh, at the end of my immigration process, so I can't travel. I know, but, but you know, Mark and Ryan can. And so when I'm back in Canada, we'll have to make sure that we maybe do a, a broadcast from the, yes. house, from the yeah. castle. Sounds yeah, like Because yeah, yeah. it was our birthday month. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and you know, ever since I've been associated with Load and I've been friends with uh, Luce, um, that's always been like a fantasy of mine to spend my. Uh... Please leave your sex life out of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not the like of that. Not the like that. <laughs> Dear Mr. <laughs> fantasy, play us a tune. But it was, because it was nice and I never wanted like a big to do, but. Finally, it was your birthday. It was, it was my birthday, and I didn't say anything too much, but it was your birthday. That's it was, yeah. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, that was way better than Marilyn Monroe singing happy birthday to the president. Oh, yeah. And we, I sang happy birthday to you. Yeah. I, all night long sitting, uh, it was, uh, yeah, we were sitting side by each. Yeah. There's a video of that somewhere. There is. It's on the broken phone. It's there, though. It's uh, <laughs> That was a special night. I can't wait to go back. Okay, well, yeah. we'll get your immigration stuff in order, and then... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's very interesting places at Cary Land. That's the name of my estate. Hey, if things go bad, uh, what's the condition of jumping towards Mexico? <laughs> well, there's Cary Land in Mexico, and then there's Cary Land in Canada. Mm -hmm. Send, send me a map. <laughs> get invited to which? Yep. Well, send, yeah. send me a map and I'll go for a long walk. <laughs> yep. we'll, we'll await the invites. <laughs> you bet. Hey, I'm making them up. I'm making them up. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, we, we've been going for a little bit over an hour, so I think uh, um, we probably could uh, start closing down now. Um, I think let's uh, let everybody Thank know. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a real treat for me, and its timing is fabulous, oh. and, and it's great to meet you guys. Yeah, and do it's more been fantastic. And I can't wait to do more with you all, and oh. feel wonderful to see you. I'm yeah. so glad that you're doing well. That's hey, if that station you mentioned yeah. it needs a show and uh, wants to give <laughs> me a job in Manitoba. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be talking to you. Don't worry. That's Fucking what rights is what I say. <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, to get hold of Loose, everyone, um, looseoverload at gmail.com, uh, looseoverload.com as well, go visit that. And <laughs> put that belly button away. Um, <laughs> um, Is that a parrot in your pocket? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go, you got a, a oh, load.canada on Facebook, and uh, uh, you can write down that uh, SoundCloud address yourselves. Um, Okay, so that's them. And just so everyone knows, uh, um, you can get all the information about the show, plus past shows. You can rewatch the show. Links on the invisibleman.ca. Lots of information there. Uh, you can reach me and Phil, or us, actually, and Phil um, on Facebook. It's all on the Mind Band and the Colorado Phil Show. We're broadcasting uh, on, simultaneously on both uh, of those pages. And uh, we're also on YouTube sometimes as well. Um, so check that out. And Phil and I are active on Twitter, MD Stallard, uh, and Colorado Phil One. Check us out. Now, so there you go. I have a request here, Phil. This is for yes. you. You 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 seem to really have a good beat on this social media thing. I can't seem to make heads or tails out of the poll function on uh, on Facebook. Now we've joked about this. I have a Twitter that is basically dead. It's like the bird ran into the the window and it flopped over. So. <laughs> I want you to put a poll out mentioning our show, obviously, as a, as a promo. Should Ryan reactivate his Twitter? Should he give CPR <laughs> to the bird and, and activate it? And let's see how many people say yes. And if we get enough yeses, I'll put my oh. Twitter address up there. Okay, you're going to – how about uh, – Can I give the... you my Twitter thing then to just control because <laughs> – <laughs> Bill used to control my Twitter for a while. And I, don't, I don't even know how to log on to my Twitter. We got shut down, hey? 
Yeah, we got shut down. A couple I'm trying times. to think of how to put you back on there. There's a way. I just don't know how. I'm on there. I just have to log on. I don't know what the fuck the password is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is too much for us. I'll change it and I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, Luz, for joining us. Absolutely been a great pleasure. Uh, I feel if I, uh, uh, we, we got things to do this afternoon. Yeah. I think, like, fix yeah. the sound system. Yeah. 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 There we go. She's got better cleavage than I do. <laughs> well, yeah, no, we're working on it. I, right? Yeah, no, I've lost a little bit of weight, so I can't compete anymore. <laughs> it's called an ex husband. <laughs> You guys, okay. this was fun. This past That's sexual had the best time of That's his life. That's great. And, <laughs> and we'd, we'd love to have you back on, Luce. Uh, okay. I, 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 you know what? You need me as a co-host every once in a while. And where's the sombrero? I thought you'd have a sombrero oh. today. I am not Mexican. <laughs> oh. And it just isn't a side. I opened up a restaurant down here just because I don't like Mexican food. I'm oh, wow. Not, <laughs> I can't do it. Not, not a sauce and taco kind of person. <laughs> oh, I, I, I have my limit on rice and beans, but uh, I would take there, the rice and beans. There, there is no such thing as too much rice and beans coming from someone oh, who, yeah, well, <laughs> who lives on rice and beans. Man. <laughs> like, my Honduran roommate may disagree with you on that. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah. So tell me next time I message you. Hey, I'm busy, dude. Yeah, well, I'll message you next time about that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you, we're going to continue, we will continue this conversation offline. Uh, but okay. We'll just say goodbye to the audience. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, everybody. And we'll catch you probably in a couple of weeks. Um, I think we're going to be doing a, a, a benefit show for HGB Canada, who's having some just some financial trouble. So we figure we could have a party and uh, invite a whole load of people on to come on and say, uh, wish oh, them well. So we'll <laughs> we'll send out some uh, prom promos about that once. Uh, um, We've had all the, the arrangements have been made, and we know what we're doing. So, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so hey, much, Luce, for joining us. And uh, yes. catch the Colorado Phil show Monday through Friday, 12 to 4 p.m. <laughs> Pacific, 1 to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time in Colorado, 2 to 6 p.m. Central Time in Winnipeg and in Mexico. And three same to time, seven, same, same time. Uh, three to seven PM Eastern time, man. It's mm -hmm. a fun four hour ride, I'll tell you that much. Indeed and it is. Mode to July twenty seventh, Bulldog oh. event. Bulldog event. Oh, you know, I'm gonna put that picture back up. There we go. That's what that's worth uh, hanging around for a few more seconds there. Just <laughs> people can get that down. Look at those knees, especially for the legs and the thighs. The, the, the knees, yeah. <laughs> Look at them gams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, Luce yeah. and Phil, if you just want to hang around, we'll chat after. And uh, okay. a very big thank you. Um, and we'll see you in a few weeks to everybody else. Thank you. Hurry. Oh.